Hello and a very good morning. You're watching the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are this morning's headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi emphasizes need to encourage organic farming, wants states to ensure that 50% of the farmers enroll in new crop insurance scheme. Crude oil prices slide to a 12-year low since 2003, but uh, the government rules out passing on benefits to consumers at home. Exports shrink for 13th month in a row. Volatile currencies, sluggish global demand combined with uh, domestic infrastructure problems to hamper manufacturers. And after cricket fixing allegations now in tennis, report says 16 top 50 players have thrown matches over the past decade. Well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday called upon states to ensure that 50% of their farmers were enrolled in the new crop insurance scheme. Modi was addressing a seminar on the national agriculture policy in Sikkim. Then Prime Minister is on a two-day visit to the Northeast, emphasizing organic farming. Modi said states should first try to make one district or village organic, which was a challenging task. He also said that his government was looking to link the Swachh Bharat mission with the agriculture by promoting production of organic fertilizers from compost. He added that farmers should stop wastage of land by dividing it into small units and instead be encouraged to install solar panels along farmlands. Sikki mein kudharan hai. Kudharan is harpa mein hai ki jab yahaan par 2003 mein vichar rakha gaya hooga jaivik kheti ka to kya virod nahi hua hooga kya? इस रास्ते को छोड़ करके फिर एक बार पुराने रास्ते पर लौटने की इच्छा भी हुई होगी आर्थिक संकट भी झेलने पड़े होंगे लेकिन उसके बावजूद भी सिक्किम के उन लाखों किसानों को मैं नमन करता हूं कि उन्होंने अपनी राह छोड़ी नहीं while crude oil prices slid to a 12-year low on Monday, oil prices hit their lowest since late 2003 as the market braced for additional Iranian exports after sanctions against the country were lifted over the weekend. Brent crude, used as an international benchmark, fell as low as $27.67 a barrel before recovering to trade at $28.86. The price of U.S. crude was $29.65 a barrel after hitting $28.36. Investors uh, fear that the lifting of Western sanctions on Iran could worsen the existing oversupply problem. With international sanctions lifted, Iran is now aiming to increase its oil production by 500,000 barrels per day. The deputy oil minister of Iran said yesterday that the country is determined to retake its share of the oil market, which plunged after crippling sanctions were imposed in 2012. Iran's total production currently stands at 3.1 million barrels per day. But the slide is unlikely to translate into a lowering of prices in the Indian market. Oil Minister Dharmendra Pradhan ruled out any cut in fuel prices, saying that the government needed the extra money to facilitate many of its schemes. We have kept some money in the tax. 40% of the that, that revenue collection went to state. It went to opposition rule state also. In a welfare state, government has some commitment for the welfare of the people. Opposition is misleading people, but our primary responsibility to safeguard the consumer's interest and to save some money for the welfare activities. Going on now, India's merchandise exports contracted uh, for the 13th month in a row in December as global demand remained sluggish. Rising volatility in currency markets also dampened Indian exports, even though the blow has been softened by a slide in the country's oil import bill. Here's a report. Merchandise exports fell for the 13th successive month in December as orders from the United States and Europe shrank and exporters grappled with the competitively weaker Chinese yuan. Outward shipments shrank 14.75% to $22.29 billion against $26.15 billion in December 2014. 
Gold imports also tripled, raising 179% to $3.8 billion in December and trade deficit widened to $11.6 billion as against $9.17 billion in December 2014. I mean, the basic custom duty on the raw material should be reduced. I mean, then there is no competition. It is very difficult for the manufacturer. So, these irritants should be removed. Government has an uphill task to boost exports. Industry experts claim that domestic problems like electricity shortages continue to hamper manufacturers. Infrastructure issues like rail, road and port connectivity also not keeping up with demands of the day. To drive the investment climate, we have to uh, bring in uh, investment in the infrastructure sector. The government is working towards investing uh, there and public expenditure in infra is going to increase. Uh, and we are seeing that started to happen. But along with that, we also need the private sector to com come back. They have virtually gone away in the last couple of years. And for them to come back, the problems in the sector needs to be addressed so that they are able to revive and come back. In November, the government announced a $400 million credit program to help subsidize exports in the coming months. Government has plans to increase India's total export to $900 billion by 2020 by diversifying India's export basket. The target looks too ambitious given that the country's exports have been in the negative zone for over a year now. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the Congress party has some advice for the Prime Minister. The party has asked him to take charge of the economy as it claimed that uh, foreign portfolio investors have taken out $700 million from the Indian market in the first two weeks of 2016. In a commentary on its website, the party said, and I quote, the first two weeks of 2016 have seen the sharpest foreign funds outflow since SEBI started keeping records in 1999. This NDA government has launched large schemes with catchy slogans and grand targets but doesn't know how to accomplish them, unquote. The party further insisted that Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Finance Minister Arun Jaitley appeared clueless on how to stop this outflow. Congress alleges that lack of application in India's economic strategy is evident from the latest data on Index of Industrial Production. IIP reached its lowest point in four years, contracting by 3.2% in November. Well, the high-level Ishwar panel tasked with simplifying income tax laws has recommended raising the threshold limits of deduction of tax at source or TDS and slashing the rate of withholding tax. In the draft report, the panel says nearly 65% of the personal income tax collection in India was through TDS and thus to have a change at the base level, the government can consider making TDS provisions more tax-friendly. The report also suggests levying short-term uh, uh, capital gains tax on annual earning of less than 5 lakh rupees from trading of shares and not treating it as business income. This, it says, will attract small investors to the capital market and cut litigations. It also recommended timely refund with interest and payment of higher interest in case of delayed refund. The draft report of the 10-member panel contains 27 suggestions for amendments under the ID Act and 8 for reform through administrative instructions. In other news now, ahead of the India-UK Economic and Financial Dialogue, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley wooed British businesses which are keen on investing in India by highlighting the various initiatives taken by the Modi government. The India-UK Economic and Financial Dialogue will be held today after which ministers from both nations will issue a joint statement. Arun Jaitley began his three-day UK visit with an interaction with a select group of persons of Indian origin who are associated with the India-UK businesses. Jaitley is expected to deliver a keynote address at the Investors' Summit scheduled at the London Stock Exchange. Well, it's time for a short break now, but uh, still to come. Return of the odd-even traffic experiment likely in Delhi, but with more checks in place. Details on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The 103rd Science Congress, Venkit Ramakrishnan, he made a telling statement that it looked like a circus. The media makes a headline out of a non-issue.
RSS affiliate Vigyan Bharati. A lot of scientists are quite uneasy that, you know, these people are the ones who are propelling the science policy. You go and ask the scientists, you will find that there was not even an iota of intervention from them. Watch Union Minister Dr. Harshvardhan on To The Point, only on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, Delhi could see the return of the odd-even traffic experiment, but this time with precautions and after removing the bottlenecks. After a review meeting today, the AAP government said experts and government departments feel the scheme is worth reviving. But it was felt that the scheme could lead to more people buying two cars. Another problem that was flagged was about uh, parents who need to ferry children to schools themselves. For the 14-day long experiment that ended on Friday, schools were made to shut down. Delhi Transport Minister Gopal Rai said that the scheme will be implemented only after a concrete strategy was finalized. Meanwhile, in the tragic incident, one of the five Dalit scholars expelled by the University of Hyderabad committed suicide on Sunday by hanging at a hostel. Uh, the university has ordered a probe into the incident, while an FIR has been filed against the union minister, Bandaru Dattatreya, alleging abetment to suicide. The centre is sending a two-member team to get to the bottom of the case. Here's more. Tension on the campus at University of Hyderabad, where a student committed suicide in the boys' hostel on Sunday. Dalit research student Rohit Vemula was expelled 12 days ago along with four other students for allegedly attacking another group of students. I need an explanation from BC and registrar. Um, I've been here for, um, from 8.30. So till now it is four hours. So even uh, till now BC didn't come here and he didn't give any explanation. I need an immediate explanation and I, I need him right now. So I need to take the body to for the postmortem. Unconfirmed reports stated that cases of abetment to suicide were booked against a union minister and three others. उसी representation को मैंने ministry को forward किया, उन्होंने क्या कार्रवाई किया मुझे पता नहीं, लेकिन जो संगठन है, संगठन वहाँ है उससे हमको कोई BJP को या हमको किसी को कुछ वास्ता नहीं है, कुछ संबंध नहीं है। जिस परिवार ने अपने बच्चे को खोया है, उनके प्रति अपनी संवेदना व्यक्त करती हूँ। मंत्रालय की ओर से दो मेंबर हमने एक जांच कमेटी भेजी है, जो यूनिवर्सिटी के हालात से हमें अवगत कराएगी। सब लोग भली भांति इस बात से परिचित हैं कि नहीं आए और लॉ एंड ऑर्डर स्टेट का सब्जेक्ट है इसलिए जब तक रिपोर्ट ना आए तब तक संविधान की मर्यादा तोड़कर मेरा कुछ कहना उचित नहीं होगा। I just wanted to throw light on a letter that the Central Union Minister Mr. Dattatreya had written to the HRD Minister Smriti Irani ji. This is a fight between ABVP and ASA Ambedkar Students Association and unfortunate that Central Ministers are involving and siding a student union which supports their party organisation. The incident had echoes in New Delhi as well. Students held a protest outside the HRD ministry where police used water cannons on the demonstrators. This government has uh, pressurized the uh, university to take action on Delhi students. This is gross injustice and we demand that the VC should be sacked, the Belangaru Dattatreya minister should be removed and the HRD ministry and the government should uh, give answer on this matter. Friends said 28-year-old Vemula came from a poor background. He held a scholarship under the University Grants Commission's Junior Research Fellowship Program. His suicide note reportedly mentions his dreams of becoming a writer and scientist. It also states his frustrations and the problems on the campus. Vemula alleged that he had not received his fellowship money for several months. Bureau report for Rajya Sabha Television. Well, let's now get you some uh, events uh, lined up for the day in our segment, The Day Ahead. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi will launch the BJP's campaign for the upcoming assembly polls in Assam by addressing a rally in Kokrajhar today. Modi will also lay the foundation stone for the campus of Indian Institute of Information Technology in Guwahati. Punjab police officer Salvinder Singh will undergo a lie detector test today in New Delhi in connection with the Patan court terror strike. A special court allowed the National Investigation Agency to conduct the polygraph test on Singh earlier this month. Home Minister Rajnath Singh will address the National Investigation Agency Day at Dalhousie today. The terror combat body is celebrating its raising day today. Army Chief General Dalbir Singh will be the guest of honour. The agency is currently probing the terror attack on the Patan Court Air Base. Well, dismantling of Delhi's bus rapid transit corridor will begin from today. The dismantling process of the 5.8 km long stretch from Mulchan to Ambedkar Nagar will begin at 3 p.m. today and after that from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day with a deadline of two months to complete the process. The BRT corridor was built in 2008 by the Shira Dixit government at a cost of around 180 crore rupees. Well, on the second day of her visit to Israel, External Affairs Minister Shishma Swaraj held talks with the top Israeli leadership and discussed a wide range of bilateral and regional issues. She conveyed to Israel that India attaches huge importance to its ties with the Jewish country, believed to be on the upswing since President Pranam Mukherjee's visit to the region three months ago. The two sides also agreed to intensify coordination to deal with terrorism, a menace that poses challenges before both. Yes, ma'am. It was a packed schedule for External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj on Monday, the second day of her Israel visit. She held back-to-back -back meetings with the top leadership of the country and discussed the entire spectrum of the relationship between both countries. Striking a cordial chord with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, India Sushma said that India attaches the highest importance to the full development of bilateral ties with Israel. India attaches the highest importance to the full development of wide-ranging ties with Israel. Our bilateral cooperation has developed well in a number of areas over the past two decades, but the potential of our relations is much more. The Israeli Prime Minister reciprocated, saying there has been a great flowering of relationship and friendship between the two countries in recent years. He further stressed that India and Israel together could do great things. The future belongs to those who innovate. Israel and India are at the cutting edge of so many areas of innovation. And by working together, we can do a lot more for our peoples and for the world. Israeli President Reuben Rivlin laid emphasis on working towards a free trade agreement with India, which he said will help deepen ties. There is much we can do all together. It is, it is important that we work to open the free trade agreement between Israel and India. There can be a better way and no better way to celebrate 25 years of our relations, which will be marked next year. Sushma also extended President Pranam Mukherjee's invitation to the Israeli president. Our president very fondly remembers his visit to Israel and especially his meeting with you. He has sent his regards Thank you. and he has also repeated his invitation which he had given to you here. So we are looking forward to your visit to India. Later, the foreign minister also called on Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Yalon, Minister of Infrastructure Yuval Shunethis and Deputy Foreign Minister Tisipi Hotovoli. At the end of her visit, Sushma Swaraj held an interaction with the Indian diaspora in Israel she urged them to build long-term stakes in the Indian economy through investment and joint development of products and services. As you know, making India is a priority of our government. Our flagship schemes of clean Ganga, smart cities, a digital India are all areas of Israeli expertise. We encourage you to look beyond trade to build long-term stakes in the Indian economy through investment and joint development of products and services. This was Sushma's maiden visit to West Asia. It's being seen as a build-up 
to the much anticipated visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to the region later this year. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, more international news now. U.S. Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump was called all kinds of names by British lawmakers on Monday as they debated whether to ban him from entering the U.K. The unusual debate saw Trump being called a buffoon and bonkers. It was triggered by a petition signed by more than 5 lakh people calling for him being barred from Britain after he said Muslims should not be allowed to enter the United States. Prime Minister David Cameron has said that uh, while Trump's comments were divisive, he does not favour barring him. Even as the MPs were united in their condemnation of Trump's comments, they couldn't agree on the wisdom of the proposed ban. Meanwhile, Trump not only criticised the debate but also threatened to cancel over £700 million of planned investments in golf courses in Scotland if he is banned. So you don't need a crystal ball. <coughs> to recognise that the person you're dealing with, maybe a successful businessman, is also a buffoon and has the dangerous capability, the dangerous capability of saying the most obscene or insensitive things to attract attention. Turning as I must to uh, Mr Trump, his comments regarding Muslims are wrong. His policy to close borders uh, if he is elected pr as president is bonkers. And if uh, he met one or two of my constituents in uh, one of the many excellent pubs in my constituency, then they may well tell him that he is a wazzock for uh, dealing with this issue in this way. Well, let's now take a look at some of the other international news in our World Wrap. At least 26 people have been killed and 20 others injured after fighter jets of the Saudi Arabia-led coalition attacked a police facility in Yemen's capital, Sana'a. According to witnesses, the victims were mostly police officers working in the building. The death toll is expected to rise as there are people still buried under the debris. The Saudi-led coalition has been launching airstrikes on Yemen's Houthi rebels and their allied forces' as targets since March 2015. The airstrikes have so far caused more than 5,000 5, deaths in Yemen, according to United Nations statistics. Russian President Vladimir Putin welcomed the Emir of Qatar in the Kremlin for bilateral talks. Putin will discuss uh, the security situation in the Middle East and the Gulf in talks with Al Thani, clearly referring to regional conflicts including the war in Syria. The Emir of Qatar is in Russia for a two-day visit aimed at discussing the Middle East and energy. Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb have identified three militants who, according to them, are responsible for attacks in Burkina Faso's capital, Ogadougou, that killed 29 people. Eight Burkina nationals, six Canadians, three Ukrainians and two French citizens were killed, among others. The statement included a picture of the three identified militants, apparently adolescent heroes in beige fatigues carrying Kalashnikovs. Moroccan authorities have arrested a Belgian national of Moroccan origin directly linked to the attackers who carried out the Paris shootings and bombings last November that killed 130 people. The Interior Ministry gave only the militants initial in Arabic and said that he fought in Syria with Al-Nusra Front before joining the Islamic State. Well, it's time for another short break on the program right now, but still to come, BCCI Disciplinary Committee bans Ajit Chandila and Hiken Shah in the IPL spot-fixing case. That and other sports news on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Chopper is the ancient version of Indian snakes and ladders. This intriguing game was popular among the old, the young and the rulers as well. The chopper has its origin in the Jain philosophy. It tells the story of virtue. Each square in turn also narrates a message of wisdom.
Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, world number one Novak Djokovic has dismissed reports of match fixing at the top level of tennis, even as the allegations overshadowed the start of the Australian Open. However, Djokovic claimed that he rejected a monetary offer to lose a match early in his career. But he insists there is no real proof of fixing among the elite. The top-ranked player's denial comes amid reports of secret files that contain evidence of suspected match-fixing in tennis. Those files indicate that over the past decade, 16 players ranked in the world's top 50 have been repeatedly flagged to the Tennis Integrity Unit over suspicions that they threw matches. All of the players, including winners of Grand Slam titles, were allowed to continue competing. I was not approached directly. Uh, I was approached through, well, I mean me personally, through through uh, uh, people that were working with me at that time. Um, they were in my team, um, and, and of course we <laughs> we we threw it away right away. I mean, it didn't even get to me. Um, the guy that was that was uh, trying to uh, to talk to me, he didn't he didn't even get to me directly. So. Meanwhile, the BCCI Disciplinary Committee has imposed bans on Ajit Chandila and Dahiken Shah in the IPL spot-fixing case. Rajasthan Royals player Chandila was given a life ban for his role in the spot-fixing during IPL's 2013 edition. Mumbai cricketer Hiken Shah was handed a five-year ban for breaching the board's anti-corruption code. Here's more. BCCI's Disciplinary Committee announcing its verdict in the Indian Premier League spot-fixing case. Rajasthan Royals off spinner Ajit Chandila given a life ban, while Mumbai cricketer Hiken Shah was handed a five year ban for breaching the anti corruption code. Cricket is a good thing. The BCCI 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 is a good thing. कदम पीछे नहीं बल्कि आगे बढ़ाएगी और कड़े से कड़े निर्णय ले हमको ये विश्वास नहीं था कि बीसीसीआई इन पे बैन लगाएगा क्योंकि जब भी न्यायपालिका ने इनको निर्दोष साबित हो चुके हैं क्लीन चिट मिली है कोर्ट से तो उसके बावजूद इनको बैन नहीं लगाना चाहिए था ये प्राइवेट संस्था है किसी की तो मान नहीं रहे हिटलर साइज चला रहे हैं Chandila was handed a tougher punishment for violating the code on accepting bribes fixing under performing trying to induce a fellow player and betting Shah was punished for making a corrupt approach to a fellow Mumbai player in the domestic circuit. Both had appeared in person before the committee on last December and were given time till 4th of January to file a written response. I think there is a reason for difference. Chandila role was more than then Shah, so really. I think the ban is absolutely justified and the BCC has taken the correct action. The hearing of Pakistani umpire Asad Rauf, whose name also come up in an IPL bribery case, was also scheduled for Monday. Rauf did not appear in person but sent a letter stating that no fair inquiry has been conducted in his matter. The three-member committee deferred a decision on him till 12th of February, giving him a final deadline of 9th of February to file his reply. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, that's it on this edition of The Breakfast News. Have a good day.